Hi everybody, I am so excited to introduce to you today's special guest that's going to minister on our Theonos platform. Before I do that, I want to encourage you last week or on our previous video that's available on YouTube now, we have Cherie Brainard, leader and teacher with Down Syndrome, who spoke and encouraged on our channel. So please go make sure you go see that video. And then also we have a lot of other videos on our Theonos platform that you can go check out. So if you haven't yet, please go do that. And please like, subscribe and comment on our channel that will really be helpful to us and I know it can bless and help you and also one of the other ways that you can help us to take this ministry forward is to contribute financially we want to thank everybody that's giving we want to thank everybody that's contributing you are helping us to make a difference in the world if you want to contribute financially to Theonos our banking details will be on the screen so excited today to announce to you Werner Stradom that's going to speak on our platform he's from the living well movement and they're from Stellenbosch but they are operating all over South Africa. He's a true evangelist that's very, very passionate about sharing Jesus with people, leading many people to Christ. And it's such a privilege and honor for us today to have him on our platform. Werner, thank you so much. We know your message is going to bless, influence, and inspire many people. Without any further ado, it is my great honor to announce today Werner Stradom. May God bless you. Hi, my name is Werner, and I'm part of the Living Well Movement. Today, it is my privilege to share with you my story. I'm so excited. Before I start, I just want to say thank you, Albert, and your team for this opportunity. Every time I preach or I share about the goodness of God, I don't take it lightly. I don't take it for granted for one second because He has transferred me from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Aren't you glad the Bible doesn't say preach the gospel till COVID comes and then you should stop. No, he says preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. And I want to share with you a little bit about my story. Before I start, doesn't matter what you are going through, doesn't matter what you've gone through, doesn't matter where you find yourself in life. This is not the end of your story. God's got a story for your life. He is the hope. He is the way, He's the truth, and He is the only way. When I was raised up in school, I remember my first memory of primary school. I remember a teacher that locked me up in a classroom. That teacher, he beated me up and he treated me like I was nothing. And in that moment, I felt worthless. And I remember I went to a different teacher, and when I tell, told her what happened in that moment, she actually said, Werner, you won't be good enough in life. You won't achieve anything. And she said, I won't be good enough to sweep the streets one day. Those words really affected me as a, as a young boy. And in that moment, I felt like maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe I'm not clever. Maybe I am a mistake. And I remember after this incident, being molested by more than one man, even being molested at the church. I remember I felt powerless. I didn't feel, feel strong and I wanted to feel strong. So as a young boy, I went to the Zangoma. I went to the witch doctor because I wanted to feel powerful. And I said, I want to feel powerful. After I went to the Zangoma, things actually just got worse in my life. I remember I started to rebel against anyone that was in an authoritative position over me. I just started to rebel. I had the attitude, I don't care what you say, I don't care who you are, I won't listen to anyone, I'll listen to myself and I'll make a way for myself. And I remember things got out of hand and I met the wrong friends. I started to drink and use drugs and do all these things because I was empty inside. Actually, I was broken. I was beaten up. I had so much anger inside of me. I remember I would have to run out of the classroom. I have to beat up the walls till I see blood on my hands. And then I would feel better for a while. And I remember this lifestyle that I was living, this attitude of I'll make money. I don't need anyone. I don't care what anyone says. In that moment, I started to smuggle diamonds. And I remember one night before a specific deal that we had to do, I remember I had a dream of me standing in jail. And I woke up from this dream and all of a sudden went back to the bed and I had the same dream again. I woke up and I realized maybe I shouldn't do this deal. But that next morning, me and my dad had a fight and I just decided, well, maybe I should just go. 
maybe I should do this deal. I don't really care if I get caught or not. But I remember when I was went into that deal, the police ran in. And as a young man, the, the amount of pressure and stress that I felt in that moment when the police came in, I passed out. And I remember they gave me water and I started to drink water. And then I passed out again because I thought I'm going to go to jail. And I said, Lord, God, if you help me in this moment, I will preach the gospel. I will work for you. And in that moment, I bribed the police. I got set free and I got a second chance. But after that, I didn't start to preach the gospel. Things just got worse. I remember one incident in, in Pretoria. I was studying there. One night I went to a lady. I said, listen, I want to use heroin. Can you help me? She was selling that specific drug and we went all the way into Sunnyside, which is a very dangerous area in South Africa. And as I was about, I followed her, as I was about to enter that specific room, I remember I saw two men on the inside standing right in front of me. On the other side, I saw two men, but the light was off inside of that building and I was about to enter that building. But in that moment, I was so drunk. It felt like something was controlling me. In that moment, I just turned around and I ran and I cannot remember how I got home. But years after that, I had an encounter with the Lord. I remember sitting in a church and I said, Lord, God, if you are even real, I want you to speak to me. Otherwise, I'm going to leave this church. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to take my life. And I remember that pastor, they were busy worshiping. He went to the front. He actually stopped the worship band. He said, there's someone sitting here. He's a young man sitting. This is the prayer you just prayed. And I remember sitting there. My heart was beating, but I knew God was real. I knew he was calling me, but I was stuck to that, to that chair. I couldn't stand up. And I remember when I opened up my eyes, I was right in front of that church. The pastor came down and he prayed for me. And I remember in that moment, the love of God coming upon me, gripping my life. And I remember I fell to the floor and I started to cry. In that moment, I was so angry because I realized that this love has always been available. His love was always chasing after me. But I was so hard. I was so tough that I didn't allow anyone. And I remember... As I, as I went into my car and I started to pursue this living God because I experienced Him. There was one day in my life I put on the radio and I was listening to an, a, a worship song of Michael W. Smith. And as I was worshiping, I was on the way back from Bloemfontein to Kimberley. And I went over this hill. When I came to the bottom of this hill, I saw a vision. It looked like a movie playing in front of me. And I saw my mom on her knees, in her bedroom, busy praying for me. I saw the position that she was lying in. She was saying, Lord, save my son, save my son. And as I saw this movie, I heard the voice of the Lord speak to me. He said, Werner, this was that night in Sunnyside. When you were in front of that house about to enter, he said, I saved your life because of your mother's prayer. And my mom and dad were faithful, praying for me. And God had a plan with my life, but I had to make a choice. And there's the scripture in the word that says, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of power, of love and a sound mind. The one translation says he's given us a spirit of mighty power. And that word there, the, the, he hasn't given us a spirit of fear. It means intimidation. And the enemy was intimidating me. He never had authority over me, but I gave away my authority when I believed in his lies over my life. And I remember I got set free. I got set free from every demonic influence. When I received the fire of God, I believe the fire of God is the love of God because he's an all-consuming father and he's the God of love. And that is when the love of God comes upon you in such a way where the fire burns away every demonic influence in your life. And he starts to burn you and he starts to flood you with that precious love of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, 
He says, God is so rich in kindness and grace that He purchased our freedom on the cross. We serve a good Father. He purchased your freedom when He died on that cross for you. He's so merciful. And the Bible says Jesus didn't just come to forgive your sins. Jesus comes in the book of Job and He says, I have not only come to forgive your sins, but I have come to set you free. He says in the Word of God, He has given you life and life in abundance. If you are not experiencing life in abundance, then you have not been set free. The Word says in John, He says, Who the Son sets free is free indeed. And I believe there's so many people. Jesus has forgiven you. The blood of Jesus has washed you, but you haven't been set free. And a lot of times the, the war is in our minds. The enemy has placed lies upon our lives and we are believing lies. And even certain lies that it's just in our head. We're just constantly surrendering the authority to the enemy when we believe in what he says about us. But I started to pursue the love of Jesus. I started to pursue the Father and I saw, but there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the gospel. And I remember locking myself up in, in a house and I started to pray for hours. I wanted to see the power of God. I wanted to see the, the dead being raised, the lepers being, I wanted to see the sick being healed because that's what the Word of God says. The Spirit of the Lord has anointed you to set the captives free. And I remember I started to pray for people. I prayed eight hours in that room in tongues because I wanted to see more of the power. I started to pursue this relationship with my father. And I remember something awoken inside of me. It was like a light just went on. And the word says, he transfers you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And I started to experience that light. I started to see that he's the way, the truth, and he's the only life. And I started to see he's the only way. He's the only truth and he is the only life. And I started to taste and see that the Lord is good. And he did something inside of me. And I remember everything that I was battling with, every addiction, he set me free in a moment. And I want to say thank you to his love. But there was a stage in my life where I started to pursue the power and I started to pray for people and I saw results. We saw the sick being healed. We saw the blind eyes go open. We saw the deaf ears opening up. But I remember there was a day in my life where it felt to me like I was still empty, like something was missing. And I remember my prayer has always been, Lord, I want to be dangerous for you. That is my prayer up until today. Lord, I want to be dangerous in your kingdom. I want to mean business. I want to be dangerous. And I remember as I said, Lord, I want to be dangerous for you. I remember the voice of the Lord speak to me as clearly as daylight. He said, Werner, you are not dangerous when you release my power through a gift. And I heard the voice of the Lord say, Werner, you are dangerous when you are madly in love with me. And every time I share that story, I get tears in my eyes because I am madly in love with him. He has saved me, but now I have a relationship. Now I am intimate with Him. Now He's more precious than anything else. His love is available for you. He wants to have a relationship with you. I remember this one day, quick story. I was pursuing the heart of God. I wanted to see, Lord, what is your heart? Show me your heart. And I remember I was by myself in this building. I took my guitar and I started to sing. I said, Lord, I want to see your heart. I want to experience your heart. I want to know your heart. Show me your heart. And I remember I got desperate. I kept on singing this over and over for probably 45 minutes to an hour. And I remember at one stage, it felt like the doors of that building opened up and I felt a presence coming into that room. That presence was so intense. I remember it was like a weight. I fell to the ground because I couldn't stand. And I remember I, remember I started to cry. 
And, and, and all of a sudden, the emotion that I felt wasn't a nice emotion. I was scared. I was fearful. I said, Lord, did I do something wrong? Why am I feeling what I'm feeling? And I remember I was crying and crying and crying. In that moment, I was stuck for probably an hour. I just cried. The emotion I felt was like my mom and dad just died. They are out of my life. I thought that I do something wrong. And all of a sudden it felt like that presence lifted up and I could actually stand up. And I remember in that moment I got in my car. I started to drive back to Douglas. That, that's where we were staying at that stage. And as we were driving back, I was sitting in the car. I started to cry again. I didn't. Something was wrong. And I remember there was a four way stop. And I was about to go right and there was a hotel and the cars were lined up there. And I heard the music of the hotel. As I turned right, I heard the voice of the Lord speak to me. I heard him say, Werner, all I want from these people, I want their hearts. And I heard the voice of the Lord said, Werner, you have asked me to reveal my heart to you. Today I am showing you how I cry over the lost. He said, if I have to show you more of how I cry over the lost, you wouldn't be able to handle it. You would die. And since that day, something awoken inside of my life to say that God only wants your heart. He has given me compassion for the lost because he's not interested in, in your money, in your finances, in, in your titles. He's interested in you. He wants your heart. He's paid the ultimate price for you. He purchased your freedom on the cross. Some of us is still stuck in a jail cell, in a prison cell. The doors has been opened. It's time for you to step out because he has made the way for you. We have to remember there is a fight that we have to fight. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not automatic. He says the violent take it by force. So there is a fight that we have to fight. And I remember the beginning of this year, I heard the Holy Spirit say, Werner, go preach the gospel in every province in South Africa. And I remember he said, you have unfinished business in every province in South Africa. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, Werner, because you are naughty in every province in South Africa. And I started to go from province to province. We as a team, as the Living Well team, we started to preach the gospel. We were so excited. We started to see so many signs and wonders. We've seen the blind eyes open. We've seen the deaf ears open. We were part of this one testimony where a baby was dead for four hours and, and she was raised out of the dead. That is the God that we serve. But I remember in this one meeting, and I want to show the, share this with you. I remember this pastor, he came up to me afterwards. He said, Werner, what does it help you go and preach to these people? And first of all, I couldn't understand, because what do you mean these people? We are people. We are sons of God. We are sons and daughters of God. He said, what does it help you preach the gospel one time, then another time, and then the fourth and the fifth and the sixth time? He says, and they give their hearts to the Lord. They surrender their lives, but they never change. And I thought to myself, I heard the Holy Spirit say, preach the gospel. That's what I have to do. I know there's power in the gospel. When the gospel is being preached, you, your life will change. And I'd never had an answer. And I remember that evening I went to my, to my prayer closet. I said, Lord, I want an answer. You said, I heard you say, I sensed the Holy Spirit speak to me and say, Werner, preach the gospel. I said, Lord, I need an answer. Should I continue to preach the gospel? I don't want to preach the gospel if I'm not effective. And I remember that next morning when I woke up, I went into the bathroom and all of a sudden I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. And I heard, he said, Werner, how many times have you been saved? And I thought to myself, he, he revealed the first time when I was young. Then he revealed the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time. But there was a time in my life where an evangelist that was full of the fire of the Holy Ghost, he was preaching under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And I was in the audience and I remember as he preached, I felt something. I had an encounter with the life-giving Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And I remember in that moment I said, yes, I, I, I surrendered my life to the Lord and every Everything changed after that time. 
And I remember the Holy Spirit said, Werner, what if that evangelist came to your city and he said, maybe I shouldn't preach anymore because there's certain people when they give their hearts to the Lord for the first, the second, the fourth time, they never change. But here I am standing because of that evangelist that kept on preaching the good news. My life has changed. And this is why I'm standing here preaching the good news of Jesus Christ because there's power in the gospel. When the good news is being preached, your life will change. There's two ways the Holy Spirit revealed to me that your life will change when the gospel is being preached. Number one, when you receive the gospel when it's being preached, your life will change. Number two, when you hear the gospel and you don't receive it, you reject it, your life will also change, but for the worse. There is power in the gospel. And I remember the Holy Spirit showed me in the book of, of Acts, He showed me the life of Philip. And Philip, the Bible says, Philip went from town to town. He preached the gospel with great boldness. The Holy Spirit enabled him to preach with boldness. And the word of God says, as he preached, the audience, the crowd was being drawn to Philip. And the, and the word of God says, he preached about the Messiah. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, Werner, when you preach the gospel, make the main thing the main thing. The main thing is the gospel that Jesus died and he rose again for our sins. That he shed his blood on that cross so that me and you now might, might have life and life in abundance. And the, and the word of God said, as he preached about the Messiah, the gospel, where the, where the Holy Spirit said, Werner, make the main thing the main thing. Great crowds were drawn to him. Then the word of God says, and many signs and wonders followed him. Then the word of God said, further in, in, in Acts, it says, and many sick people were healed. And then it goes on and it says, many evil spirits left their victims shouting. But then it says, and great joy came to the city. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, Werner, continue to preach the gospel. When you preach the gospel, people will get drawn to you. When you preach about the Messiah, number two, the sick will get healed. Number three, evil spirits will leave their victims. But then he said, great joy can only come to the city when people are getting healed, that people are getting set free, then great joy can come to the city. Continue to preach the good news. The good news, He is the way, He is the truth, He is the only, he is the only way. It, the gospel is not simple, it is simplistic. The Word of God says so clearly, repent and turn to God, number one. Number two, then be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, number three. And then you will receive the Holy Spirit. If you can't even be obedient with those fundamental things that the Word says we must do, how do we think we're going to change the world around us? The Bible says, Jesus came and He said, it is better for us that He leaves. Jesus came. He said, it's better for you. It's better that I go because when I go, I'm going to give you the comforter. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has come upon us. You remember the life of Peter. There was something different from the atmosphere that was around Peter. The very shadow of Peter healed people as he walked past them. But that same Peter denied Jesus three times. When that servant girl came to him and said, you were with Jesus, weren't you? And he said, no, 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 I don't know Jesus. The second time he rejected Jesus. He said, no, I don't know Jesus. The third time, that same Peter Jesus said in Acts, wait in Jerusalem until you receive the gift of God, the Holy Spirit. When he received the Holy Spirit, the power of God came upon him. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, your true identity, your true nature comes forward. That same Peter then healed the sick. He raised the dead. That same Peter, Jesus comes and says, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Listen, guys, the gospel is simplistic. You have to receive it, but you have to apply it. There's one guy, his name is Reinhard Bonnke. He used to say, the gospel is like a bar of soap. The blood of Jesus works like a bar of soap. If you go into the shower and you just wash yourself with the water, but you never take the bar of soap and you apply it, it will not work for you. 
You have to take the blood of Jesus. You have to take the word of God and you have to apply it to your life. Then it will work for you. The gospel works. When you preach the gospel, the biggest mistake that we can make is that we think the more we pray, the more we fast, the more holy we become. When we preach the gospel, there will be more results. No, the gospel will work. The gospel in itself works because Jesus made that way. But the word of God requires that we are holy because the Bible says we have to be holy. We have to be without fault. We have to be blameless. How do we become holy? God is holy. Therefore, we should be holy. But we all have come and fallen short of the glory of God. But then the good news is that Jesus came and he made a way when he shed his blood. He died in our place. We were supposed to die and deserve to go to hell. But Jesus came. The Bible says he took sin upon himself and he died and he rose again in our behalf so that now we might have life. So we die with him and we have risen with him. And now we have life and life in abundance. Hallelujah. This is the good news. Today, the good news is that he loves you. The good news is that He's still looking after you. The good news is His love is chasing after you. My question is, are you ready to receive it? Are you ready to apply it? Are you ready to receive what He has done for us because He has made the way for you? Jesus is in love with you. I have seen miracles. I have seen everything. But the biggest miracle in my life is that now I have life in abundance. The biggest miracle is I've overcame death already. I, when I die, I know where I'm going. One day this guy came to me and he threatened me. And I remember standing there and I was busy preaching the gospel at a stage. He came to me and said, man, I'm going to kill you. I said, well, I don't really care if you kill me because I have overcome death. I know where I'm going. My question is, do you know where you are going? And he surrendered his life to Jesus Christ. This is the good news. For this is eternal life. The Bible says that you might know him, not know about him. He's calling you into a relationship. He's calling you to have intimacy with him. How do you become holy? It's through what Jesus has done. And the word says the Holy Spirit. That's why it's called the Holy Spirit. He's holy. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of holiness comes upon you. And the Bible now says you are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. But then the word says, don't grieve God's Holy Spirit by the way that you are living. We have a, re a responsibility. We are not legalistic when we try and live right. We don't have to try and live right. We, we cannot save ourselves. The Bible says we are saved by what he has done for us. He paid the price. He purchased our freedom. But now don't grieve the Holy Spirit by the way you live. We have a responsibility because the Bible says you have to take off the old sinful nature. You have to take it off. And now you have to put on your new nature that you might become like your creator. You have been created in the image and likeness of Jesus, of God. It is your nature but because of what happened, your vision has been distorted. So therefore, the Bible says you cannot change yourself by striving and performing and trying all these things. The Bible says you can only change when you behold Him. It is when you encounter Him. It's when you see Him, because when you see Him in the reflection of His eyes, you will see who you really are. And then it doesn't matter what the world says or who's got an opinion or who's criticizing you. It only matters what your father says about you. And it's time that you will see that your, the eye of your heart will be enlightened, that you will see who you are and whose you are. You belong to the king of kings. You are a king's kid. You are an ambassador of Christ. You are in this world, but you are not from this world. Today, I'm here to give you the good news, to say your story isn't over, to say He's calling you. The Bible says, knock on the door, keep seeking Him and He will open the door. You will find Him. Are you looking for Him? Are you hungry? Because the Bible says, come and drink those who are thirsty. 
And out of your innermost being will flow, will flow rivers of living waters. He wants to flood you with living waters. There's some of you even watching now, you are thirsty. You have a desire inside of you. There's questions inside of you. He wants to flood you with His living waters. It's only Him that can fulfill every desire you have inside of you. The world cannot, cannot fulfill the void, the emptiness you have in the inside. That space was only created for the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, I want to end off with this. If you feel guilty and you feel guilty for not feeling guilty and you feel ashamed and you don't know why you always feel guilty. The Bible says in Romans, there is now no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because you are now in Christ Jesus, the power of the life-giving Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit has set you free from the power of darkness. The power of darkness leads you to death. But the power of the life-giving Spirit is here to give you life and life in abundance. The Holy Spirit. He's inviting you into a relationship. He wants to set you free. He has done it already. You have to say yes, simple as that. And then you have to find to fight the thoughts, the thoughts of the enemy, because the enemy doesn't have any authority over you. The intimidation of this world will come. But are you ready to stand up in your true identity as sons and daughters of God? Because he made a way that you might live victorious. We are now victorious. It is now our privilege. Listen here. The Bible says, when Jesus came, He did three things. Number one, He preached the gospel. Number two, He was teaching people. Number three, the Bible says, He came to destroy the works of the enemy. Now Jesus went and the Holy Spirit came. Now it is our work to destroy the works of the enemy. He healed the sick because that's a work of the enemy. He destroyed the the works of the enemy. It is our privilege, it is our responsibility now as believers of God to destroy the works of the enemy, to release the power of heaven. Lord, on earth as it is in heaven, it is our privilege to release heaven on earth because we are now filled with the Holy Spirit. It is our responsibility. He's calling you to wake up and be the church for a change to run like never before, to preach the gospel till the ends of the earth and therefore now make disciples of all nations. You are called, you are chosen for such a time as this. It is time for us to be the hands and feet and see the glory of God be released on this earth like never before. I want to end off by a prayer. If you have listened to this video and you feel something inside of you is stirring up to say yes, to give God your complete yes, not with one foot in and one foot out. No, He's called you to be free and live a life of holiness. If you are here and you listen to the sound of my voice and you say, listen, Werner, I don't understand everything you said, but I am feeling the call of God and I want to say yes. And if you don't know where you're going, I want to pray with you because the Bible says the Holy Spirit is our surety of what God has done and what Jesus has done for us. The work of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says it's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Holy Spirit reveals the Father to us. It is His work. It is His job. That precious Holy Spirit wants to influence you. That the Bible says, don't get drunk on wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. It is a command to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Then easy as that, three things you have to do. Repent and turn to God. So let's repent. If you feel you have to repent, I'm going to pray with you now. Number two, then it says, and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. If Jesus at the age of 30 had to be baptized, why shouldn't we be baptized? And then he says, you shall receive the Holy Spirit. It is a promise to you and your children's children. For a moment, I want you to close your eyes. For a moment, I want you to open up your heart. If you feel there's something you have to repent for, I want you to pray after me 
Say, thank you, Jesus. In this moment, I come as I am. In this moment, I repent of every mistake, every sin I have made. In this moment, Father, I surrender my life to you, Father. In this moment, I pray that your precious Holy Spirit will come upon me and fill me up. In this moment, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the King of my life. And I'm going to pray for you for one second. I pray, Father, every person who is listening now, I pray that you stir up a hunger inside of them for more of you. I pray, Holy Spirit, might you come and set the captives free. That every demonic influence over every person watching now, whether it is a pain in your body or a thinking or a lie that you are believing, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, on the count of three, you'll be set free. One, two, three. Freedom in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the fire of God will touch you right there. The love of Jesus. Because the Bible says, listen here, me and you, we don't deserve to be happy. We don't deserve to be set free. We are sinners, but the Word of God says, Jesus deserves that we are set free. Jesus deserves that we are happy because the Bible says the kingdom of God now, Romans 14, 17, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy. That is your portion. That is what's available for you. The kingdom of righteousness, peace and joy. If you don't experience those three things, you are not in the kingdom. It's time to get back into Jesus because there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. He has made a way for you. It's time for you to come in Him and Him in you again. For it, the Bible says in Romans, it is your spirit and the Holy Spirit that joins together. And now out of your innermost being, now you can testify, Abba Father, He's now your Father. He has become your Father. He loves you. He paid the price for you. You are good enough, not by what you have done, but by what He has done for you. Now go out and change the world and go out and live like you are a son and you are a daughter of the Most High God. I bless you all and I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. He's the King of Kings. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. And this is the day that the Lord has made. In this day, this is the best day of your life. In this day, we will rejoice and we will be glad and we will boast not in ourselves, but we will boast in what He has done for us and who He is. He's the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm.